This video outlines a suggested method for testing the PFC 6000 series fire alarm control panel by using the built-in walk test feature. The test procedure is a suggested method. Please make sure to comply with all local codes, AHJ, and end user testing requirements. Prior to starting walk test, when you arrive at the site, upload the history to maintain a record of events since the last site visit. Connect the laptop computer to the fire alarm control panel and launch the programming software. In the programming software, upload a history by clicking on this icon that you see here. Give this a file name. Put in your username and password and then type in either the IP address of the fire alarm control panel or the panel's name and then go ahead and click OK. This will upload the history that is inside the fire alarm control panel. And now I can print this or save this to an electronic file. And I have the site history since our last visit. The next step would be to clear the panel history. This allows the test events to be the only events in the panel history, creating a clean test report in the end. To clear the panel history, access the main menu by pressing Enter. Then choose number 5 for System Tools. Enter the code and then select number six, erase history. Press the enter key to erase history and now the panel history has been erased. At this point you can start walk test from the fire alarm control panel. Access the main menu, select option four walk test, enter the code. Your first option is to start walk test. So you want to say yes to this, which is what is flashing, so select enter. And then you have to decide if you want the dialer enabled. Do you want the signals to be sent to central station? The default is yes. If you don't want them sent, you can toggle it with the up and down arrow to no. Select enter. The AV enabled is the next question. So do you want the notification devices to sound when you're testing devices. They'll sound for about three seconds and then turn off automatically. If you want them to sound when you're testing devices, you keep it as yes, which is the default. If you don't want them to sound, you want this to be a silent walk test, you toggle this to no. When this is at no, this also makes the sounder at the enunciators silent as well. The next option is email enabled. So if you don't want your email to be flooded while you are testing the system, you'll want to say no to this one as well. At this point we're in walk test. If, if you escape out to the main menu you'll see your walk test is active. There's a 60 minute countdown. As soon as the first device is tested that will restart to 60 minutes. That is an inactivity timer. If nothing is tested within 60 minutes the system will reset and it'll go out of walk test. At this point you can start testing devices in the field. Each time a device is triggered, it will show on the fire alarm control panel that the device is active and in alarm. Once the trigger clears in the field, the event will clear at the fire alarm control panel after a couple seconds. The LED of the device latches on when the device is tested and it will stay latched on even when the device clears. Please make a note that the SLC can power up to 13 LEDs when you're testing. So if you want to use the LED as an indication of test, you'll need to reset the walk test after testing 13 devices. You'll notice the timer resets to 60 minutes each time a device is tested. Once you're done testing the system, you can exit walk test by going back into walk test. So access the main menu, select number 4 walk test, enter your code, and then press 1 to end test. Once you've ended the walk test, you can return back to the programming software and upload the history to create a test report. When I open up the history, I can see that the walk test started, the points that were tested, walk test ended, the system is now back to normal. And I can export this into Word or Excel to create a nice test report for my final inspection. Once the test report is captured, either by printing it or saving it to an electronic file, the last step would be to clear the history. This leaves the history empty and only the events that happen after you leave the site will be listed in the history. To recap the walk test procedure, the first thing you'll want to do is upload the history to maintain an event log. Either print or save the history file. 
The next step would be to clear the panel history. After clearing the history, start walk test and test all system devices. When finished, end walk test at the fire alarm control panel. The next step would be to upload the panel history which will create a test report and either print or save this file. The last step is to clear the history at the fire alarm control panel. The panel is now set until the next inspection. For more information, please visit our website www.pottersignal.com.